is it's going to make me talk because they're putting me, including me, in a, in a lot of these videos. He also uh, gave a very different perspective from what he says what happened in Mexico with Phil Baroni. Don't forget, he spoke to Phil on the phone, so he may have some information on Phil's side of the story, which I'm going to show you guys now. And John A. had very interesting things to say about Phil. And um, again, he said things to me off record. I'm not going to say them. I'm hoping that, you know, I offered him to come on the channel and speak or send me a video, which I can uh, put on here for you guys to watch. Phil, I know personally since he's a baby. He was a high school wrestler. He was very good. He comes a, a fighter. He's got an edge to him for the people that say he's got a bad time. But most fighters have edges to him. That doesn't make them murderers. But his case is in Mexico. I just sort of set this straight for people to understand. So he's caught in a system with such corruption and cartel of members and dirty police to that extent and government officials that are dirty. Clouds of smoke billowing from a prison in Juarez, Mexico, as police hunt for at least 25 inmates who escaped. The violent attack leaving 10 guards and seven inmates dead. <laughs> Relatives of inmates flocking to the prison demanding information. You know, I'm on the street my whole life. I was a guy that killed. I was a guy that committed crime. I was a guy that shot people. I was a guy that was violent. I understand violence and I understand Phil since he's a kid. Is he a tough guy in the ring? Does he fight yet? Does he get the scraps in the street yet? A former um, UFC fighter just kills a girl in Mexico. Bill, the New York badass Barone is 29, 5'11", 185 pounds, making his debut in Prague. We were in Japan talking to him. I don't know if it was the day before or the day of. Whoa! in a bar just swinging for the Oh, nice! As I got back, I know some people said uh, he killed somebody. Like, what? Quit lying. Quit lying. We couldn't have wished for more. What a second round. It's like a rocky move. Oh, and a uh, girl slid into my DM said, yeah, he killed my friend. Oh! It was, it just beat the girl up. Another kick, another kick, another kick. And then the New York badass, Phil Baroni, is victorious in his Bushido debut. And what an incredible second round of... You guys remember last week in the video, the last video I did on Phil Baroni, I had said that I'd spoken to John A. Light, and he had said some interesting things about the case, about his feelings, wasn't happy with some of the things that the media is reporting. And he told me a story on the phone. And the story was very interesting. And he had recently just posted a video up uh, putting his side of the story and what he thinks happened. And uh, on the phone conversation I had with him, the things that he says in this video are very similar to what he said to me on the phone. What people see on the outside, not necessarily is who you are on the inside. So when I first got involved in this case, one of the biggest things that stood out to me when I'm hearing it on the news is I got to reach out and get involved with his attorneys to help them through what I know about him and give them a fair chance to beat a case in a corrupted country. So as I was saying, he was mad at me. He was mad at the media outlets, mad at reporters for reporting the things that they had on the case. And as far as I'm concerned, I mean, me, you guys have been watching me, people who have been watching me, I've been on here for seven years. I don't speculate. I don't put my opinion with things. Very, very rarely do I do something like that. I only give you guys information based upon the real facts that I find. And I usually try, like I said before, try to uh, make sure that they're all credible sources and I confirm them with more than one. So that's what I do here. And I explained to him on the phone, you know, I didn't have uh, uh, anything in this. You know, I wasn't trying to misreport anything. And he had some things to say about it. Everybody that's trying to get a click on YouTube, you're talking about a man's life. You're talking about a woman that was killed, whether it was on purpose or an accident by cartels or whoever else. Let justice run its course before you start convicting people and giving false information. And possibly that information will get him killed where he's at. The more I'm hearing these guys talk nonsense that are clueless about the facts of this, is it's going to make me talk because they're putting me, including me, in a, in a lot of these videos. 
He also uh, gave a very different perspective from what he says what happened in Mexico with Phil Baroni. Don't forget, he spoke to Phil on the phone, so he may have some information on Phil's side of the story, which I'm going to show you guys now. And then the first thing that came out to me, jumped out to me, is if you're going to kill somebody, you either leave that scene and take off on a hop because you panic, or you, you don't panic and you clean up that scene and you maybe take the body with you or move the body to another location or any of those things. Phil Baroni did none of that. Phil Baroni left the room, went to a store to buy beer and cigarettes to come back to the room to spend time with this girl. It's not his girlfriend, it's a girl he knows. He comes back to the room and somebody else came in that room and murdered this girl in that time period. Now, when he left and went to a store to get beer and cigarettes, who does that? We'll take it step by step. When he goes back and he finds her dead and he leaves the room, he goes hunting down the police. Who does that? So if you're a guilty party, you don't do that. Either clean the scene or you run. You don't go looking for the police and you don't go shopping. So when someone says it, just take it at face value and just think logically, what person is going to do that? Yeah, and some of the things that went on with the, with the corruption is they cleaned the crime scene. Why would you clean a crime scene? So they cleaned evidence, which makes me believe they were in on it, the police. I don't know the girl's background completely, right? So I'm not sure exactly what she's into, what she isn't into. I've heard different stories, and I don't know if they're accurate or not. I heard she was working the street. I heard she was moving drugs. I heard she used a lot of drugs. Now. That's not factual, so I don't want to put that on a, on a woman that's dead. While he was telling that story about what happened in Mexico, he also gave light on what he think happened um, in the fight in the prison. Remember when I said that he got his teeth knocked out, Phil, by the guards? He gave us some more information on what he said Phil had said what happened to him. And for the guys out there that said he got a beaten in Mexico, that's not true either. He went to prison. They tried to jump him. You're talking about a Mexican jail. And he gave them beatings. He fought by himself, and he, he fought two or three guys, I'm not sure, but definitely two. So when you, these phony guys that are haters that are doing these shows and have no clue what they're saying this is a guy that's in a prison where his life's in danger every second and also he was saying remember when i told you guys the autopsy results uh, that were reported i had said that after she died uh supposedly according to those results phil had done something bad to the body an attorney from puerto vallarta who i'm actually selling a piece of property there right now she tells me yeah man you got to read the autopsy report there's damage to her body including her private areas that make them think something took place after she died so like it's just some horrendous horrendous lowbrow that is uh it's bad it's bad for everybody well he shed some light on what he thinks happened on that too I know what kind of situation he's in. So every time they open their mouth and they lie and they talk about autopsies that are not true, then basically they're making insinuations that something was done to the body after it was dead. It's not even accurate. It's not even close to being accurate. Now, looking at this entire situation, the whole thing is sad. What happened to Paula? We lost a woman who had kids, right? And we lost her in this world. You know, her kids lost her, her family lost her. And it's sad, you know, what happened to Phil, um, according to the reports, if it's true, um, it's sad too, because this is a guy who, you know, had a good career, could have had more in life, had more to give. And now he's in a prison in Mexico and with cartel activities, like John had said in this video. He's in a town outside of, uh, it's a, it's a, and where he's at is a stronghold of the cartel. He's in an area. That's one of the biggest strongholds of the cartel. So 
the police know that also. But what I, one of the biggest things I want to do is I want to put a warning or a plea to the American consulate here. They better be on their job because I know these jails. The inmates work for the wardens. And they control those jails. And if they want to ask for somebody to get killed, it goes through the government officials. And if it's the corruption that I believe it is because of the, what went on with this case so far, uh, the American council better make sure he's in a, in, in a safe spot there. And he got himself in a, in a really big mess. And it's a sensitive situation. It's uh, delicate. And I understand, again, like I said before, I understand the family cares about him. Uh, but again, we're not here to hurt people, you know, and I'm definitely not here to hurt anybody. I don't want to misreport anything. I'm only giving out the information that I get. Uh, and that's what information I'm giving to you guys. And you guys know me. I've never been that way. All this time that I've been on YouTube, the reason why, you know, people watched and more people are watching now is because they know how I do things over here. And again, I want to thank, you know, all of you guys for watching these videos because you guys gave me a chance to do what I love and get out of that job that I was working 20 years miserable every day of my life. Finally, I'm doing, you know, what I feel like I was meant to do. So, uh, again, sorry for, you know, Paula, um, you know, Phil too, you know, I hope uh, it gets resolved. I guess we're going to have to wait and see. And uh, it's a sad story. So let's just see what happens. Sweet.